already done come on clap your hands like you believe it's already done can we pray this morning and reach up and grab it God we grab everything that we have for us by faith this morning in the realms of the spirit we're reaching up and we're pulling down the anointing we're reaching up and we're pulling down miracles we're reaching down and pulling down breakthrough come on pull it down pull it down by faith this morning God everything we need is here God we pull on the anointing this morning we pull on the man of God this morning we declare that the word will go through God with power and authority God we pull down every stronghold this morning we pull down every weapon that has come and been formed against us we tear down the enemy right now by faith this morning come on pull it down pull it down got every agenda everything that's not like you God we pull it down we pull it down in the name of Jesus come on come on come on hallelujah now I wish you would just read back and give God some praise and honor and glory come on somebody shout praise honor and glory hallelujah hallelujah and father we just stand in awe of what you've already done we declare that this season is blessed we declare that this service is blessed we declare that everything we need is already in the house if you believe that clap your hands and give God praise hallelujah to God be the glory for the great things that he has done good morning How are you all this morning? Amen, amen. 
Amen. At this special time in our service, we want to say welcome to our first-time worshipers on this morning. If you're here for the first time, please lift your hand so we can celebrate you on, on today. Amen, amen, amen. Also to our virtual worshipers, welcome to our worship experience. And this time in our service, we call Pass to Peace. And we pass the peace to our virtual worshipers. If you are there with someone, we want you to love on them or love on yourself. New birth family, pass the peace three. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Yes, God.
is made, we rejoice and we're glad in it. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, would you make some noise? Come on. The reality is that millions didn't make it, but we're one of the ones that did. Are you glad to be alive this morning? Glad to be on the Lord's side? There is no church on the planet Earth like new birth. No church. God has given us a mandate to not leave our church within these walls, uh, but to really make an impact in the community. Um, one of the ways in which we are endeavoring to do that is we want to be a blessing to 2,000 children in DeKalb County. Come on, make some noise for me. 2,000 young people in DeKalb County. And so we've issued out a charge and a challenge uh, that over uh, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be collecting brand new back to school shoes. Come on, y'all got to shout about it. Brand new back to school shoes. And uh, even for our friends and our partners and our online members, uh, they're mailing shoes into new birth. Uh, here's what we're doing. We got two different teams uh, on today. Uh, team iPhone, make some noise, please. Team iPhone. Uh, for our visitors and friends, that's for those uh, who are anointed of God. Amen. There's something special on their life uh, that they got an iPhone. Uh, and then we've got some new converts, those who are trying to get into heaven uh, the best that they can. Team Android, make some noise. All right. Uh, we're going to see which part of our congregation uh, really hears from God with a clearer channel. Uh, so those of you who are team Android, you bought shoes today, you're going to bring them on this side. Uh, those of you who brought on team iPhone, you bought shoes on today, you're going to bring them on this side, please. Our music ministry is going to give us some uh, giving music to get you in the mood to do it. Ask that you'll please, if you're not sure which team you're on, just put it on this side if you're not sure. Come on, quickly, please. Those of you that brought shoes with you, if you'll bring them to the altar now. Come on, give God some glory for them as they come. Yeah, yeah. This is how I fight my battle. Yes, Lord. Sing, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. With my praise, with my worship. This is how I fight my battle. Come on. 
on if you know you're surrounded by our gracious God give God glory for it hallelujah you may be seated our worshipers who are just gaining entrance into the sanctuary uh, you can bring those shoes down anytime you walk through the door anytime you walk through the door I want you to be able to bring those shoes down do me a favor new birth would you give God glory for all of those who have shared Come on, y'all got to do better than that. Give God glory. For all of those who have shared, we are so uh, appreciative uh, for you. It looked like iPhone is coming up. Come on, come on now. You already know. Come on. Amen. It's, it's a hating spirit right over there. I'm, we can right have a deliverance service. Amen. Uh, bless the Lord. I, I want to thank God for every gift and uh, for every giver. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of more weeks we're going to be collecting until uh, the last Sunday in July. Uh, so, the, amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. How many of y'all got enough faith to believe we're going to exceed the expectation? Uh, we're going to exceed the expectation. Uh, and so ask over the next couple of Sundays uh, that you'll please, please, please uh, bring uh, shoes every Sunday. Uh, now, some of you all are having fond uh, memories. You all are bringing baby shoes. Amen. Amen. We, we, we got to do it for the Negroes in middle school now. We, amen. Y'all still want daycare. Uh, but we, we, we need to do it, please, for all different sizes, uh, for both of our genders. Uh, but ask that you will not, you will not limit uh, what you give to tennis shoes. Amen? Uh, we we, we got to get our young people dressed for business. Amen. To come and take over the world and do it uh, in a five-star stellar uh, fashion. Uh, I am believing that nothing that is successful happens by accident. Uh, success has got to have a purpose. How, how many of you believe that God has a purpose over your life? It's got to have a purpose. Uh, and so many of us are missing the mark simply because we are shooting with no target. Uh, you've got to be aiming towards something. Uh, if you do not have a vision, the Bible says that you're going to perish. And I'm believing that the last six months of the year, uh, that there is something that God is going to deliver into your life before December 31st. I don't want you to give God glory for what you have. I want you to give God glory. Here's your shout for your vision, for what you see. Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. Do y'all see God doing something amazing before December 31st? As a consequence, friends, I, I want to challenge, I want to stretch your faith on today uh, that today you are giving your money an assignment. You're giving your money a, an assignment. You are giving your money a mission. Uh, that when it is that I give, when it is that I sow, I am believing God with intentionality uh, that I am sowing towards something. Uh, it is not random. This is not a, a rainy day fund, but I am investing for what it is that I believe God is going to help uh, materialize in my life. This way, sis. Just come on over here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all done blocked her blessing. Just, 
Amen. I, I, I want you to have a mission of what it is that you have in mind that I am believing that before this year ends, God has kept me through his grace through the first six months, but the last six months, sir? <laughs> tap him, tap him. How, how old are you? Seven, so you don't have a phone. Do, do you have a phone? Yeah, take that bag, give him that bag. <laughs> Amen. He don't know no better. You need leadership. Amen. You over? Amen. It's, it's a spirit of rebellion in this church, y'all. Y'all do not honor leadership at Newburgh. Uh, listen, all right, I got two more chances. Where you going? That's right. I knew the Afro was with me. I knew. <laughs> All right. Your money has got to have an assignment. Your money has got to have a mission uh, for where it is that you're believing that God is going to take you and for where you want to go. And so I don't want you to look at what it is that you are giving today as a donation. I want you to see it as an investment. Did you hear what I just said? I am investing for what it is that I am seeing. And I'm believing that God is going to give me what eyes have not seen. For what eyes have not seen and for what ears have not heard. Yes. Come on, help me. Please help me. I don't feel good. I don't, I don't like the way this is going, but uh, listen, I, I, I want you, uh, while it is that you're giving ushers, if you'll help us, uh, if you're absent of an envelope, would you lift up that hand? You don't have an envelope. Amen. All these Android people without envelopes, lift up that hand, please. Thank you. Lord, I'm convinced all the Apple people are tithers. Amen. Yeah, there we go. Come on, let's turn it. Bless the Lord. I want you to get that envelope in your hand. I want to stretch your faith on uh, this day. Hear me very well. Hear me clearly. I want to stretch your faith on this day. Uh, for every non-tither, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Every non-tither, I want you to challenge you to give a gift of $60 on today. Every non-tither, I want to challenge you to give a gift of 60 Those of you who are watching online, I want to challenge you uh, through Cash App, through GiveLify, push to pay, text to give. I want to challenge you to give a gift of $60 that I am making an investment in the face of God that what he's shown me, I expect to see before this year is over. All of our tithers, I'm telling you. Yeah. She couldn't even face me. All of our tithers, I'm asking you please with intentionality uh, that you're going to give. There it is. There you go. There you, that's my man's in them. Come on, where you going? Y yeah, go right there. Thank you. Gotta love it. All right, thank you. I want you to have that tithe in your hand, your seed in your hand. I'm gonna stretch you today. All of our online viewers, you ought to be tithing. If you're not tithing, at your bottom, I want you to be giving a, a gift of $60 on today. I'm investing in my vision. I'm investing in what I see. I'm believing God for the unreal, for the not yet, for the ridiculous, for the extraordinary. Lift that gift as high as you can. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, what you did last week, what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is in expectation 
for what you're going to do before this year is over. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our ushers are moving amongst you to help receive your gift, uh, as is the culture of our church. If you want to sow your seed for yourself, uh, the altar is open and available for you to be able to do that. Uh, those of you who are just gaining entrance to the sanctuary and you want to bring your shoes now, you're able to do it. Our music ministry is going to give us uh, some giving music. Come on, give God a hand clap. Was anybody at Revival this week? I said, was anybody at Revival this week? Come on, one more time. If you believe it's going to be big. Make some noise for her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we're, we're grateful for the uh, Ford Retirees Timex Club. Uh, where are you all? Ford Retirees Timex Club. Are you all in here? Come on, would y'all stand? Come on, stand. Come on, give God some glory for him. 
They're hanging out with us today and they have made a significant donation uh, towards our shoe drive. Give God a hand clap of praise for them. <laughs> then coming in all the way from the SIP, we got a group here from Forest A Baptist Church from Natchez, Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi, stand up, stand up, Mississippi. Y'all ain't shouting for Mississippi. Their young adults are here, and I'm appreciative. Their pastor is here with them. Pastor Bates, where are you? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Family, come on, Bates family, y'all stand up. Give God a hand clap of praise for them. Mississippi is in the building. Did y'all bring me a T-shirt? Yeah, uh, uh, they only use androids in Mississippi. <laughs> Listen, all right, uh, I'm, I'm believing that God is going to do something amazing uh, in our ministry. How many of you all have enough brazen faith to believe that God can make you debt free? No mortgage, no car, no, y'all ain't saying nothing. How many of you all believe God can make you debt free? I want to turn up your, your shout a little bit. How many of you believe God can make your church debt free? Bless the Lord. I want you to give your attention to the screen for just one moment. Give your attention to the screen for just one moment. Our worshipers who are just coming in, if you brought shoes with you, you can bring them to the altar as soon as you come in. Thank you. And now, New Birth, it's time for our video announcements. Today, today is the day we launch our Back to School Shoe Drive. That's right, we're collecting new shoes for boys and girls. Our goal is 2,000 pairs of shoes. Please bring donations to the altar. The shoes will be distributed Saturday, August 3rd during our Back to School Outreach. And check this out, the challenge is on. Android versus iPhone users. Let's see. Play. They are Android users in the media department. <laughs> I'm, I'm figuring it out. Every spirit of rebellion in this church is from an Android user. If you <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Church. Imagine the possibilities, affordable housing, assistant living, solar panels, urban gardening, and so much more. With God, all things are possible. It's not just in scripture, it's in real life, and it's related to new birth. Can you just imagine that when God graces us to pay off this mortgage, that the first Sunday of every month will only be for maintenance and upkeep, second, third, and fourth Sunday completely for outreach. In the communities right here in Decatur, in Lithonia, in Stonecrest, and even around the world. I can't fathom that when God established the church, it was about lights and bills and mortgages, but really strengthening those who feel cast out. This is our hour to model to the whole world what the whole church is supposed to look like. Get ready, because possibilities are turning into reality. If you believe it, come on, the visitors don't know no better. New birth, if you believe God's going to bless us to be debt free. God awakened me not long ago. You may be seated with a vision called 235. A vision called 235, which comes from Psalm 23rd, verse 5. My cup runneth over. How many of you want that kind of anointing on your life? My cup runneth over. There are so many people who discounted our church, dismissed our church, and thought that there was no way that we would ever breathe again. They didn't think we would still be standing. 
But how many of you all are crazy enough to believe if God be for us? Written about in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, talked about in every barbershop, uh, mouthed about by every blog. It's no secret uh, that we have uh, about $30 million worth of debt. $30 million worth of debt. But I want to ask you a question. Do you think our God is bigger than that? Yeah. The critical question you got to ask yourself, there's no way in the world we should have $30 million worth of debt and we're sitting on 240 acres. Amen. God ain't making no more land. And so we've got to do aggressive economic development with what it is that God has given us. And for us to be a 21st century church, we cannot limit uh, ourselves to a plate mentality. That what God is calling us to do cannot be done just from an offering on Sunday, but God is calling us to be a seven-day-a-week ministry. I hope you all have that kind of faith. The fastest growing demographic in America, you're not going to believe it, the fastest growing demographic in America are our seniors. And so much focus is on young people, but not on our seniors who are living longer lives. Uh, but the church has neglected them uh, to really put in a place where they'll be able to reside in comfort in the twilight of their years. Uh, there's got to be an assisted living program right on our campus. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. There's so much abuse that happens in nursing homes and senior centers that we've got to have confidence that when our mothers or fathers get of age, we can have them in a place of community that will strengthen them. Come on, give God glory for it if you believe it. We have to develop institutions on our campus. The reality is that in the next 10 years, we're going to develop over 100,000 millionaires in America. And the, and the overwhelming majority of them, hear me well, the overwhelming majority of them will not have college degrees. There are 3.5 million people with bachelor's degrees who live in poverty. Uh, and we have forsaken that a lot of us, uh, a lot in our lineage, in our family, were able to make an honorable living uh, through carpentry and through electricians, and through plumbing. Y'all not saying nothing to me. And we have given all of those jobs to the Latino community uh, and then can't figure out why our sons don't have employment. I believe that we've got to have W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington at work in our community. There's got to be a training center right here at New Birth that will teach our children coding so that they'll be a part of technology in the future. How many of you all got that kind of faith? Have that kind? 240 acres I shared. Uh, with our leaders not long ago that we ought to have a solar panels right on our campus to be the first mega black church in America that is completely green, that we are mindful of environmental injustice. Something is wrong when so many of our children have affliction of asthma and autism because of all of the toxins in our community and the church says nothing about it, not at new birth. How many of you all believe God can do it? We're working with a solar panel company even now to be able uh, to transform our campus that we can give reusable energy uh, to 2,500 citizens in DeKalb County. 2,500 citizens in DeKalb County. I want to ask you, I don't know how y'all feel about it, would life be better for you if you had no electric bill? Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I said, would life be better for you? To run the operation of this campus, do you know every month it takes us seventy to $80,000 just for utilities? Y'all didn't hear what I just said. That ain't mortgage. I said seventy to $80,000 just to turn these lights on. 
this air on. Y'all came in this church? Ain't no Martin Luther King funeral home fans. That's the air conditioner blowing. How I many y'all glad for that? Amen. But if we're able to move in this way, move in this area progressively and aggressively, our church will have no more utility bills. How many of you all can believe God for that? Uh, we, we, we have had the, the, the foot of the Evangelical Christian Credit Union has been on the neck of this church since Bishop Long. Uh, and uh, they have tried to put a tight vice uh, on our church to squeeze us in every possible way. Uh, they've given us two years. They've given us two years uh, to try to shop our loan to give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. I'm of the mind. I don't know how y'all feel about it. I don't want to be with nobody that don't want to be with me. Oh, y'all don't feel that. Let me say that again. I don't want to be with nobody that don't want to be with me. And so I'm doing uh, something aggressive that I want your partnership in. Over and beyond our tithes and offerings, over and beyond our tithes and offerings, on one Sunday, the last Sunday in September. Can you put an alert on your phone for me? The last Sunday in September, on one Sunday, above our tithes and offerings, we're going to raise $500,000 in one Sunday. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. A half million dollars in one Sunday. Some of y'all ain't got faith. Those of y'all that know God can do even more than that. A half million dollars in one Sunday, I told our board as well as our uh, economic committee that if we're able to raise a half million dollars on one Sunday, any financial institution will be glad to take us. And I'll be glad to go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They'll be glad to take us and we'll be glad to go. Uh, in this uh, program, we're going to start uh, in intentionality, uh, moving towards it the first Sunday in August. Uh, the first Sunday in August, we're going to go through a season of prayer and consecration for eight weeks. For eight weeks as a church, every Tuesday for eight weeks, we're going to be in fasting. How many of you all believe that God is able to do it? We're going to fast together eight consecutive Tuesdays beginning uh, in August uh, because our theme is our cup is running over. Uh, we're going to have everybody in the church is going to have a new birth cup. You're going to have a new birth cup, and at the exact same time, six in the morning on Tuesdays, we're going to pray together while we drink from that cup. Hallelujah. Because we believe what God said to David. He said, if you establish my house, I'm going to take care of your house. How many of you all believe that God can do it for you? Y'all don't have crazy faith for five of y'all. How many of you believe God could give you a half million in one day? Y'all ain't got that kind of faith in one day. God could bless you with a half million dollar contract, half million dollar check, a half million dollar partnership uh, will come right to your door. $500,000 is what we're going to do on the last Sunday in September. I shared this vision with the leaders of our church a couple of weeks ago uh, and asked them to step up, and they did so as only the leaders of New Birth can. Uh, can I ask the leadership of New Birth, would you please stand, all of our deacons, all of our elders. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Y'all got to clap better than that. I pulled them into a room, remain standing leaders, I pulled them into a room uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago and they took uh, the vision of this pastor that has just been with you for six months and bought into the vision. We've got to raise, collect on the last Sunday of September, 500,000. Dr. King said, if you call yourself a leader and nobody is following you, you're just taking a walk. Uh, but, but these leaders lead by example. And I'm thankful for them in seeing the vision and hearing it. Uh, they have made a pledge together collectively of $89,000. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Y'all got to do better than that. 
Would you give God glory for our leaders? Come on, give God glory for our leaders. You may be seated, leaders, which leaves us in a balance uh, that on that Sunday we've got to collect $410,000 three hundred and ninety five dollars we've got to do that by sunday september 29th our ushers are moving amongst you i want to give all of you a covenant commitment card every member of our church i need you to please have that a covenant commitment card I want you to be prayerful and mindful about what it is that you're going to give every person is going to receive that card every person you're going to give it in different decibels whether that's increments rather two thousand three hundred and fifty 1,350, 1,500, 235, or other. But I need every person to fill out that card. Be mindful. I'm not asking you to give it today. I don't want you to give it today. I see you clutching your pearls. Do not, amen. I'm not asking you to give it today. I'm asking you to give it on the last Sunday in September. I've been with you for six months, and in six months, we have not done any targeted giving over this looming debt over our head. I want to thank you, uh, New Birth, for trusting a new leader and a new voice. Um, thank you. That in six months, I want to tell you, in six months, because of your giving, we have not missed one payment. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because of your giving, here it is, none of our payments have been late. New Birth, I hope you know you have one of the best staffs on the planet Earth who are committed to the vision, committed to the ministry. Because times got tight, membership waned. Uh, they, the staff of New Birth took a pay cut of 21%. Hear me, 21% seven years ago. And with a 21% pay decrease, they stayed on staff. Y'all got to give God glory for that. Would y'all really clap for the staff for new birth? Come on now. Because of the giving of our church and because of our heart, I hope you'll celebrate with me that this year we're restoring all of their salaries back to where it's supposed to be. Oh, come on, y'all got to do better than that. What kind of work could we do in this community? What kind of work could we do in this world if we didn't have that level of overhead? We're sending out $140,000, $180,000 a month to handle this debt. And I want that to come back to DeKalb County. Oh, y'all ain't got that kind of faith. Wanted to come back to this county. I need you to please get that card in your hand and in your possession. Next week, we're going to be doing meal prep uh, that we're going to be preparing to ship 50,000 meals to Kenya. 50,000 meals are going to Kenya on next week. I'm going to talk to you about that uh, at the end of the service, but I need all of you, please, to get that commitment card. I want you to begin praying about it. I'm telling you, what you make happen for somebody else, God will make it happen for you. Does anybody believe that? I want you to take that neighbor by the hand, even while you're seated. Take that neighbor by the hand. Everybody has somebody's hand in your hand. Most of the time when it is that you're shouting, you're shouting about yourself, shouting about your family, shouting about your needs, shouting about your health, shouting about future opportunities. I want to shift your gauge for just one moment, for just one minute. All over this building, the choir, the praise team, the ushers, security, deacons, elders, ministers, visitors, Viewers, I want every person for one minute, would you open up your mouth and start praying for our church? Hallelujah. That no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Pray for our church that whatever God puts in our heart will come into our hand. Pray for our church that resources will never be an issue. 
Pray for our church that every time we open, souls will get saved. People will get delivered, will be set free. Pray for our church that God will raise up a generation that loves our God and calls his name. Pray for the person whose hands you're holding that God will use them as an agent of change for this church. God will lift them up, not so that their name will be great, but that his name might be glorified. No good thing will he withhold from us. And as a consequence, I believe no good thing will he withhold from you. And those of you that believe it, I need you to give God a hand clap of thanksgiving for what he's going to do. Come on, you got to do better than that. Come on, come on. This is for mature believers. Would you give God glory like you believe God is going to produce and perform a miracle before this year is over? Hallelujah. I believe it. My, my first faith is bursting at the seams. Uh, and for that, I'm overwhelmingly grateful and I am appreciative. Uh, next Sunday, uh, friends, all of us are wearing our new birth uh, t-shirts. There's my girl. Come on. Come on. You got it. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. This is my favorite member of new birth. Lord, I love this woman. I'm telling you. Amen. Next week, we're wearing new birth uh, t-shirts. If you don't have one, ask that you'll go to our call to conquer. Come on. Come on. Hold my hand wearing that shirt. Thank you. Uh, so ask that you'll please go to our Call to Conquer bookstore, get your new birth t-shirt. I uh, ask that you will please uh, express yourself creatively. Add whatever it is that you want uh, to your t-shirt because it is a working day for us. Uh, we're going to be preparing 50,000 meals in every corner of our sanctuary next Sunday. Give God a hand clap of praise. Yes. I, I announced this a couple of weeks ago, and my best friend went and got a shirt, and I need y'all to see what kind of phone you got. An uh, iPhone. <laughs> see, the spirit recognizes the spirit, I'm telling you. So she put on her new birth t-shirt, Team Jamal Bryant. I'm not telling you what to put on your shirt, but if you want God to bless you, amen. Ask that you'll please, thank you so much. Ask that you'll please, please, please uh, make sure uh, that you get your t-shirt wear them on the next Sunday. Uh, but ask that you would only use the shirts. Don't get the knockoffs. Get the shirts uh, from our bookstore. Amen. Uh, they are available to you. Uh, last night was amazing, y'all. Uh, we had our first uh, drive-in movie. I'm telling you, people came from everywhere. Uh, we had throwback movies uh, and watched Car Wash last night out on the lawn. People brought lawn chairs. Uh, we had black-owned food trucks. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, the seniors, the kids, everybody enjoyed themselves. It was a holy and wholesome event and moment of fellowship. We didn't have no problems. No problems on last night. except for two senior citizens. We had a church movie last night, watching Car Wash. The children are there, the grandchildren are there, and two seniors snuck in two bottles of wine <laughs> in brown paper bags. I'm going around greeting the saints, shaking hands, hugging, and then I started smelling communion. I s <laughs> I said, wait a minute. The old lady said, keep it moving, Rev. Keep <laughs> Y'all gotta pray. Lord, I thought it was the millennials. It's the old people. Still getting it in. Amen. Uh, so we're thankful. Uh, <laughs> Lord, I thought I had seen it all. 
the Douglas family reunion. Where are you, Douglas family reunion? Stand up, Douglas family. Thank y'all. The Mims George Brown family reunion. Where are you? The Mims George. Lord. Thank you. Your family came to church today. Just wave your hand. You, you and your family came to church today. It's just one new birth family reunion. Thank you. We're thankful for all of our families who have come and have shared. Would you do me a favor, please? Do me a favor, please. Would you invite somebody uh, to worship with us? We're going to the Word of God. Our music ministry is going to prepare us uh, for it. I uh, ask that you would uh, take a moment and tell somebody, download the app. 13,000 people, wait a minute, musicians. 13,000 people have already downloaded our new birth app. 13,000 people. Give God a hand clap of praise. 13,000. If you've not already done it, I want you to turn on your notifications. Uh, today we're going to the escape room. We're going to the escape room. You'll only get the address if you have your notifications turned on. I want you to please join me. I want you, uh, Naomi, come on quickly, please. I want to introduce you to my middle daughter. Uh, you've met my three baby girls, uh, but my middle daughter's here. Uh, she just finished her freshman year at Towson University. Amen. Oh, come on, y'all. At Towson University, I'm appreciative for her. Uh, she's an honor roll student studying in health, uh, and great things are going to happen. Any of you? Uh, who got a hookup with college money, please see me after church. My check is due in two weeks. Thank you. Our uh, music ministry is coming. Uh, after they would have concluded, ask that you would please stand for the word of God. Come on, music ministry. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands all over the room and help me worship our Savior, our Father, our King. He's everything to us. He's our healer, he's our provider, he's our protector, he's our sustainer, he's our keeper. And we worship him in spirit and in truth for all that he is to us. Come on, lift up a sound of worship in the room. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, we bless your name, Lord. Give you glory, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's lift it up. It's real simple. Yeah. Sing everything. everything. Yes, Lord. Everything to me. Everything to me. Everything. Everything. Hallelujah. He's everything to me. Everything. Sing life and breath. Life and breath. Yes, Lord. You're everything. Sing your my peace. Yes, you are Lord, everything to me. Sing joy in sorrow. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, everything to me. Sing hope for tomorrow.
Come on, clap your hands only if he's everything to you. Would you stand to your feet, secure your Bibles, and make your way to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I want us to consider this morning verses 25 through 29. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 29. Once you found it, won't you say, I got it? For those of you who have your pledge cards at the conclusion of service, our ushers will be at all of our doors. Ask that you will please uh, drop those pledge cards in the receptacles held by our ushers uh, so that we'll be able to have an account. Do not leave your card on the floor or in the chair, uh, but ask that you will please give it to the ushers on your way out. Mark 5, verse 25 through 29. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. But instead of getting better, she got worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, touched his cloak because she thought to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. You may be seated. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. She spent all she had, but instead of getting better, she got worse. I want to preach for a little while this morning using as a subject, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them sometimes, I really feel like nobody cares. I have to confess to you transparently 
that I'm still traumatized by an incident that happened recently on United Airlines. A 10-year-old adolescent by the name of Phoebe Claven was going from San Francisco to Grand Rapids, Michigan to report to summer camp. From San Francisco to Grand Rapids, there are no direct flights, so she had to make a layover in Chicago. When she stopped in Chicago is where all the trouble started. Phoebe's 10 years old, got off the plane in Chicago, trying to get to Grand Rapids, and the escort from United Airlines was not at the gate to meet her. 10 years old. She asked the lady at the ticket counter for assistance. But the lady at the ticket counter told her curtly, you just gonna have to wait. I'm dealing with other customers. Phoebe, 10 years old, tried to wait patiently. And after some time elapsed, she asked the ticket counter agent, can I call my mother? To which the ticket agent curtly responded again, you're gonna have to wait. Just go sit over there. She sits over there so long that she misses her connecting flight. In exasperation, but no sign of a temper tantrum, she pleads for somebody to either call the camp or call her parents. The agent promises to do so, but never does. Nobody tried to rebook her. Nobody tried to comfort her. And nobody offered her any food. No assistance is extended to this 10-year-old at all. When the original flight lands in Grand Rapids, the camp counselors are worried when Phoebe doesn't alight from the aircraft. They call her parents to verify because maybe the plans had changed. It's only in this moment Three hours later, that her parents know she's missing. Phoebe's parents immediately call United Airlines in search of their only child. When they call United Airlines, they are met with a representative in India who checks the manifesto and deduces she must still be in Chicago says to the frantic mother, don't worry about it. I'm sure she's okay. The agent in India never apologized and never attempts to reach the child. Phoebe's mother asked to speak to a supervisor and is placed on hold for 40 minutes before somebody takes the call. Meanwhile, the father who's in the same room picks up his cell phone, calls United Airlines, expecting better service because after all, he's a platinum member and has all of the rights and the privileges that come along with it. He inquires as to where his daughter has been, why nobody is looking for her, and ask the flight attendant to please go look to which the representative from United says to the father dismissively, I'm sorry, but my shift is almost over. Maybe somebody else can go do it. He's asked to be placed on with a supervisor. The supervisor at United Airlines places him on hold for 30 minutes. Nobody ever told him that the escort 
system used at United Airlines was outsourced. And that United Airlines no longer uses the service. Even though they had already paid the fee to have their daughter escorted. The parents at this point are completely unnerved that nobody has attempted to find their only child or apologize, the parents plead to put out an APB. Finally, at their wit's end, the father says to the ticket agent, how would you want your daughter treated? And what would you want me to do if our roles were reversed? They put the father on hold for another 15 minutes, track down the daughter, and finally place her on the next flight. True story. Regrettably, at 10 years of age, that young lady had a crash course on mass incompetence and dispassionate adults. At 10, she had to discover that nobody cares. You would be amazed how many of us would be better served if we got that message earlier in life. Some of you didn't find that out till 30, others 50. Others of you still don't realize it. And yet you don't know how many people who are sitting on your road this morning have been trapped on a layover trying to take off and they feel like they've missed their connection. Who was supposed to meet them in the last chapter of their life never showed up. When you tried to get assistance and aid, everybody act like they were too busy or consumed in their own world to lend anything to help you and all you're trying to do is get to where you are called to. It appears we are living in an environment that this is an environment of the apathetic. Uniquely, apathy, according to Dr. Leon Setzer, author of the book, The Evolution of Self, he says in that book, The Evolution of Self, is that apathy is the feeling of not feeling. It is the only, according to Dr. Setzer, apathy is the only emotionless emotion. It is the dangerous place of acknowledging what is missing, but absent of the drive to pursue it. Without feeling, you aren't stimulated to do much of anything. Biblical Mediterranean times to work in the treasury of the king, you had to submit to being a eunuch, which means your reproductive organs had to be amputated because they were of the mind frame that if you were absent of passion, you won't take anything. I'm trying to figure out how long have you had your passion cut off? You can't possibly believe that the intention of God was just for you to have a 40 hour a week job that you have no pleasure in. How long your passion been cut off that you stop dreaming and you just begin maintaining? How long your passion been cut off you don't even care how it is that you move through life because you've got no vision, no dream, and no goals. How long has your passion been cut off that you don't even care about what it is that you're doing with your life and how it is that you ought to pursue? What, what made you get to a place to amputate your drive? You hate how it is that you look, but you won't lose any weight binging in front of the refrigerator, won't exercise, haven't drank one glass of water. Where's your passion? Did you even submit yourself to sleep with somebody you don't love? 
and you don't even see a future with. How long has your passion been cut off? That job was never supposed to be permanent. You were just supposed to be there until something else happened. And you hate being there, but refuse to look for something else. How long your passion been cut off? You spending as much money in rent as you could in a mortgage, but won't even look for a house. How long? Has your passion been cut off that you'll be connected to something that never feeds you but it drains you and you just got to sit in the car to keep yourself together because you've trained yourself not to cry and not to be frustrated and not to respond and not to react and people got no idea that if one more thing happens to me I'm going to implode and lose everything. How did your passion can get cut off. And ironically, apathy is not just a feeling, it's an attitude. The DNA of that attitude is indifference, unconcern, unresponsiveness, detachment, and dispassion. In summation, it's, um, it's not caring enough got to be careful how, how you handle some people because there are some of us who are in this room who are watching. We either all in or we all out. There, 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 there's no in between. I'm telling you, you better be grateful as long as I still care. But the moment I cut that part of me off, it don't matter whether you cry, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It don't matter whether you hyperventilate, it don't matter if you telling me you done lost everything because once I stop caring, you are in a dangerous place because I'm a giver, I'm forgiving, I'm loving, but as soon as I figure it out that you taking me for granted and don't value what I bring, I will shut all the way down down. And it ain't that I'm angry. I don't have an attitude. I'm just finished. <laughs> to the point that I don't care that I don't care. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't care that I don't care. Before, I was trying not to hurt your feelings. I was trying to figure out if you okay, but now you don't push me, bro. And I got to tell you, I'm not having it. I'm in another place, and I don't care. And that whole spirit of apathy that spirit of apathy has become pervasive where nobody seems to care. Four years later, and nobody seems to care that there's still no clean water in Flint, Michigan. Nobody seems to care that right now there's a slaughter taking place in the Sudan. Nobody seems to care that this administration has tailed back the intention to put Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill indefinitely. No, nobody cares that in two weeks they're get beginning to start deporting immigrants when this is a country built on immigration. Nobody seems to care that the Republicans only care about the rich and the Democrats only care about the middle class, but nobody got a strategy for the poor. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care that there's more of our students who are strung out on debt from student loan debt but cannot get entrepreneurial small business loans in the same faction from the same place that doesn't mind giving them money for a used car but will not give them money to start and buy a house. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care that that this president has been accused of sexual impropriety by 20 women. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And has a 50% approval rate from the country. What does that say? Nobody seems to care that right down the street in Alabama, they're trying to dictate what women can do to their bodies. And this decision is made by grumpy old men that don't even have faculties of their own bodies. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care that the whole issue of procreation has only become evidence of white privilege, that they see black and brown children are growing at exponential numbers and the numbers of white babies being born are being shrinked and nobody is telling you because they've given you a misnomer. It's more white girls having abortions than there are black girls, but they want to put our face on it and nobody sees. Nobody seems to care. And most of our men who are incarcerated are incarcerated for nonviolent offenses. But most of the murderers and rapists and armed robbers and thieves are white men. But every time you turn on the news, it's a black man in handcuffs up against a police car. Nobody seems to care. I felt bad about Phoebe. I don't know her, never met her. But I found another woman in Mark chapter five. She wasn't flying through Chicago. But she's flying through Jerusalem. And something amazing happens in her own life in Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five, the Bible tells us she's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She's been bleeding for 12 years. I got to park here parenthetically and tell you, that's a long time to have one issue. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. That's, that's a long time to be grappling with the same obstacle and the same burden. And isn't it amazing? She's been going through it for 12 years and nowhere in the scripture can we find her family. It done got quiet 12 years and nobody who she grew up with is checking on her. 12 years and nobody from the church has called her for 12 years ain't nobody prayed for her for 12 years nobody DM'd her on Facebook for 12 years nobody is asking is there any way that I can help you and she got to deal with it by herself talking to somebody who been going through something and it didn't start yesterday and what's crazy is you got people who know what you're dealing with. And they try to pretend like they don't know. But we'll never check on you when you spend so much time praying for them and checking on them and giving money to them. But the time you need them, you in it all by yourself. 12 years, 12 is a number of structure. 12 is order. So to make a foot, it's got to be 12 inches. So she is out of order for 12 years. She is absent of structure for 12 years. And I want to tell you that when you got no order or structure to your life, you're going to end up bleeding. God, I'm talking to somebody who's sitting on your row, who's always going through something. Why? Because they've got no order. This is the hour. I got to talk to some adults in here. This is the hour where you got to stop flying by the seat of your pants and figure out some order for my life. I, I don't want you to roll over at 60 and not have money to retire. You got to figure out what am I going to do with the rest of my life. I need some order. She suffered at the hands of many doctors. And I need you to watch this new birth. This is before Obamacare. She got no copay. She got to pay all of this out of pocket. And the doctors keep taking her money even though they know they can't heal her. It's amazing how people don't mind taking from you. 
Hallelujah. When, when they know that they don't have the right intention for your wherewithal and for your future and for your destiny. She keeps paying them even though there is no sign of improvement. And with no sign of improvement, she finally hits rock bottom and runs out of money. Isn't it amazing that it's only when she runs out of money that she starts thinking about God? Y'all just miss what I just said. Maybe, just maybe, that what she's going through is not the enemy. Maybe this is God who needs to get her attention. Who knows as long as she got money, she'll look for other people. But when I cut her resources off, she'll start looking to me for her assistance and her deliverance. I don't know who this is for, but it's about 500 of y'all who don't even know that the absence of money is what got you closer to him. Yeah. When you didn't have anything, it's when you begin to pray and trust God with no money. Says I, I want to see how, how will you trust me knowing the first of the month starts tomorrow. And you ain't got the money for the car note. Got the money for aftercare. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ain't got the money for tuition. You ain't got the money for the mortgage, but I'm trusting God. Even for what I don't have the money for. Y'all got to forgive us because there's a few of us that have found out that favor is better than money. That even when I don't have the money, the grace of God. Having, having no money makes you creative. I said having no money brings out your creativity. Big Mama and them were prepared dinner. It's almost like an alarm went off in the hood. Everybody starts stopping by around dinner time. Y'all ain't saying nothing and there you are trying to figure out how all these people going to eat this one pot roast. I'm talking to y'all raised old school where mama said, don't count your food. I can't hear nobody and God would keep multiplying it even while she was cutting it. You were able to say, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a sea begging for bread. Talking to those of you who are in this room, who can testify that sometimes my miracle wasn't that it was paid off. This is just for my hood praisers. My miracle wasn't it that it was paid off. My miracle is I got an extension. <sighs> Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, I just need you to work with me until I can get it together. And God said, that was your miracle. She, um, she has no order. And because she has no order, she has no structure. She is breaking the rabbinical code. Because the rabbinical code, as established from Exodus, is that the priests ought to lay hands on the sick. She ain't got no order. She ain't got no structure. She bleeding. Here it is. And so she thinks to herself, because being broke makes you creative. She said, I ain't going to wait on the priest to lay hands on me. This is out of order, y'all. That there is no biblical evidence of anybody ever touching the priest. But she said, I know I'm out of order. That's when you know somebody getting ready to do something that's great. Y'all ain't saying something. You, you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they start with, I know I shouldn't say this. You, you know something offensive is getting ready to happen. She said, if I can just touch. I, I, I got to ask you something. Because my spirit is weary on people who leave out of church talking about I don't feel nothing. 
Hallelujah. I see everybody else shouting and rejoicing and celebrating, but it didn't move me. Hallelujah. How do you not know that every now and again, God is sitting in your midst waiting for you to touch him? I got the wrong church. Some of y'all keep waiting on a touch from God and God is saying, I'm waiting on you to touch me. Y'all forgive us. You got folk on your road that got all their bills paid, don't need no money, nothing is going on in their body. They waiting on a touch from God. But those of y'all that are creative and realize I can't wait, I need God. You touching your neighbor. I said, touch heaven. I, I need God to know. I need something. Hallelujah. You see that, please. Hallelujah. You see that I got to touch him. Hallelujah, please. I got to touch him. Hallelujah. I, I need him to feel me. I need you to grab that neighbor's hand and just pull on them. Hallelujah. Tell them I got to touch God today. I've been going through too much. I need order in my life. I, I need structure in my life. I done wasted too much money in my life. I need God to touch. And she thought to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I need you to hear this. She's not sitting in the car by herself. She's not in the living room. She's in a crowd. She's in a crowd. She thought to herself, if I can just touch him. You never found it peculiar that what she thought she didn't share with anybody? She didn't share her plan, her concept, or her idea with the people around her. And what I need you to know, this is going to upset some of you, the people around her are not heathens. The people around her are other church people. But she said, these church people ain't trying to help me. They only shout for what's in it for them. And so I got to keep it to myself. I'm talking to somebody that ought to be worshiping. Why? God says, I want you to worship me for the stuff you haven't shared, for, for the stuff that's been private, for, for the stuff that you don't readily discuss. God said, I'm getting ready to handle. She said, if I, if I can just touch him, something amazing can happen. And here's my problem just for mature people. Listen to me well. And she never discussed it with the people around, didn't discuss it with the disciples. Read it when you get home. My problem, I hope, real people, this is gospel for grown-ups. And she never discussed it with Jesus. It's going to get heavy right through here. I'm talking to real people who ever had a crisis of the soul. We had to reconfigure and ask yourself, albeit rhetorically, I wonder if God even cares. I know we were trained and raised not to think like that, not to speak like that, but you, you go through some moments. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me, would you? Were you trying to figure out, does, does God see me over here struggling? He, 
He, he sees me dealing with all of this and I watch breakthroughs happen for other people. When is it my season and when will it be my turn? Trying to figure out if God cares. All the people in the world, how, why he got to take my mama? Does God even care? Trying to figure out what's happening. I'm trying to do what's right. And the doctor done found a tumor. Does God care? How in the world? The one that did me dirty goes on to live the rest of their life. And here I am trying to pull up the fragments. I need real people right through here. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm tithing and still broke. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why I'm nice to folk and they nasty to me for no reason. Does God still care? I need it because I, I invested everything I could in these kids. And I don't even recognize what they have become. There is no trace of the parenting and the upbringing that I've given them. And I look at them and I'm trying to figure out who are these aliens in my house? I'm trying to figure out if God cares. You know how many people are watching online but won't come to church? Because they've resigned that God no longer cares. The largest demographic of people who claim to believe in God but won't go to church because they're convinced that God don't care. And she thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, she navigates through the crowd, touches him. And the Bible says something that somebody needs today. I can't find this word in Matthew and Luke and John. I only found it in Mark. And this word is the word that God wanted you to have, and it's the only reason why you're here. Here's the word I want you to carry with you the rest of this week. Immediately. You miss your shout. Whatever is out of order in your life, Whatever has been bleeding, whatever's been broken, God said immediately. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to move, but I feel a breakthrough right through here. I just need 80 of y'all to holler back at me immediately. Everything I've been wrestling with, everything I've been contending with, everything I've been fighting through, immediately. And Jesus said, who touched me? My time is up. Said, who touched me? And the disciples report back to Jesus. You see all these people in new birth? How am I supposed to know who touched you? And he said, the one who had the deepest need and didn't care what other people thought about him. That's the one that I'm getting ready to make whole. I'm, I'm telling you, if you can't shout because of what other people might say, he ain't looking for you. She's trying to hurry up and get out of there. He said, grab her. Don't let her leave. Hallelujah. This is simple. I, it's almost like I, I've wasted a, a Morehouse education, a Duke education, Oxford training. I, I done wasted all of that to give you this one point. 
Wish I had something deep, something in the Hebrew, something in the Greek, something in the Aramaic to translate for you. I ain't got none of that. I only got one point. I'll try to preach better next week. All I want to tell somebody, and you need it and your soul needed it. I just need to tell somebody, God cares. In spite of everything else, and in spite of how you've been treated, in spite of what they said, God cares. <laughs> he cares about me. I said, He cares about me. I, I need somebody to just lay your hands on your chest and shout out loud, he cares about me. He cares about my future. He cares about my family. He cares about my health. He cares about my finances. God cares. Embrace yourself for me. He cares about me. Hallelujah. Your soul needs to hear the sound of your own voice. I need you to just say it out loud. He cares about me. cares about me. I speak over every vessel in this room. I pray for every person who's watching online. Every person who's viewing this telecast. I pray that this week God will give you evidence that he cares about you. I can't hear no worshipers. I, I said, this week, he will give you irrefutable, empirical evidence. He cares about you. I don't care what you've been dealing with the last couple of years. I don't care how you've been mishandled. But I pray that God will show you through subtle in small ways that he cares about you and he cares about you enough to not let you leave the same way you came it's just a word of reminder would you just embrace somebody around you deeply, heavily Embrace him and tell him God cares about you. He cares about you. He cares about you. Jesus and my soul for I Tiffany, listen to me. There's somebody, listen to me. Somebody in this room been stuck on a layover. Family members, people made promises and weren't there to help you. Nobody helped you make your connection, get to your connecting flight. But I'm telling you, new birth is your clear point. We're going to help you get to your highest level in God. You're here in this room. Listen to me. You're in this room. Saying, Pastor, I don't even know how you broke into my, my email. I don't know how you read my text messages. 
don't know how you decoded my emails. I don't know how you prison broke my phone, but you, you done figured me out. And that was the only thing I needed to know today is that God still cares for me. I don't know where you are, but I need New Birth to be your church. And I want to tell you, I want to be your pastor. If you're here in this room, would you come meet me at this altar, please? Come on, quickly. I'm believing a harvest of souls today. New birth, I'm telling you, watch God move. Somebody just needed to know that God still cares. New birth, if you could see what I see, you would be shouting better than that. Come on, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. In my soul. In my soul. You ain't gonna believe me if I tell you, but it's 20 other people getting ready to come stand behind you. 20 other people, softly musicians. Watch this. If you're in this room and your whole life been bleeding, you're in this room and you feel like you're just dehydrated by life, barely able to pull together, you've been having to do it all by yourself. I need you to push through this crowd. I feel like I need to say it again. Being broke makes you creative. Come on, quickly, would you come? Make me whole. Look at God. Are y'all gonna shout about this? Look at God. Jesus. Yes. Come on, come on, hear that come. Come on, hear Jesus. In my soul. I don't know where they are, but they sitting right on your row. Would you do me a favor? Would you just talk to the people? Watch, look at me, look at me. It's five more people that belong here. I'm getting ready to free you to go get them, but I want to tell you where they are. Come on, give God some glory. Here they come. Listen to me. It's five more people getting ready to come. There's five more people getting ready to come. Listen, there's five more people getting ready to come right now. Listen to me. I'm getting ready to free you. I need you to go talk to the people who are on your row. We don't want to leave nobody behind. Here's what you're getting ready to do. Here's what you're getting ready to do. You're going to talk to the people on your row. Here, here, here come my five. 
while they're coming, those of you watching online, you're saying, Pastor, this is the kind of church I need to be a part of, kind of ministry I need to be connected to. Go to our website right now. You can be part of one of our virtual churches. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. All right. Here's what I need you to do. Talk to the people on your row. Don't do it yet. Look for the people on your row who are intentionally trying to avoid eye contact. Those are the ones that got to get saved today. Come on, real quick. Ask them, are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life over to God? They ain't moving. They ain't saying nothing. Where, come out, come out, wherever you are. Bless his name. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Lord, look at this harvest. They still coming. Look at this harvest. L listen, is somebody else out here? I don't know where they are, but I need them to know they are a part of a church that cares. I need y'all to shout for this whole family coming from the back. Come on, shout like you care. Shout for this young lady coming. All right. Stretch your right hand to faith. Let's try it. This is last call. I need y'all to shout for this young couple coming. Come on. Look at these young people coming. Are y'all gonna shout about it? All right. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me, you're in the right place at the right time, joining the right church, serving only God, doing the right thing. And I know that's right. Show you're right. If you know I'm right, come on, big ups to the Savior. Listen, those of you who are here, if you'll follow us out, new birth, they came as friends, they leaving as family. Come on, give God some praise for them. You may be seated. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. Uh, I'm grateful uh, for all of you uh, not taking a vacation from God this summer. Hallelujah. How many of you all believe God going to bless us even in the summer months? Even in the summer months, God is going to bless us. Hear me. Uh, we are a local church with a global mandate. Uh, what God has given a new birth is far more than Stonecrest, Lithonia, Decatur. Amen. How many of you believe that there's a global mandate on our church? Next week, we're doing something crazy. Next week, next week we're doing something crazy. We're going to feed uh, 50,000 people in Kenya. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. We got a team of missionaries being dispatched from our church. They're going to serve over there uh, and to give oversight to what it is that we do next Sunday. Everybody's in your new birth t-shirts. Uh, we're going to have a uh, abbreviated worship service. Uh, so it's important uh, that you're here on time uh, because right at the end of service, uh, we're going to turn our entire lobby into workstations. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise for it. Uh, not only are we going to feed 50,000 people, but we're going to uh, send a battery of medical supplies uh, over to Kenya for people who have been dying of curable diseases. Amen. You, you, you got to pray for them. Y'all are stuck with a pastor that's a dreamer. Amen. I, I, I just believe that we can do everything. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all got that kind of faith? I, I believe that we can do everything. 
Uh, now, in order for us to do that, uh, to, to pay for that expenditure, not just for the food, for the supplies, uh, but for the shipping, we're at a budget uh, of about $20,000. A budget of $20,000. This is how crazy my faith is, is, uh, is I'm asking y'all for $20,000 after I just asked for a half million. <laughs> All y'all got a cousin just like that. You just, you just gave him money and he coming right back. Amen. Um, but I'm believing <laughs> that God is going to bless us. I've got two weeks in order to get it done. Uh, and those of you who are watching, you're a part of our virtual family. Uh, I want you to partner with us in order to get this done. Uh, it's not going to take that much time, uh, but we've got to buy all of our food, our supplies uh, on this week so that we're in position. Then next week, we got to handle all of the shipping uh, for it. Uh, but I want to challenge you, media ministry, if you'll prepare uh, our media presentation as it relates to Kenya, you'll get that for me in your possession. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, your uh, covenant pledge card, you're going to give to the ushers on your way out. Uh, on your way out, you're going to do that, but you're not leaving yet. Uh, so you don't need those instructions just yet. But when you leave, uh, you're going to give those covenant pledge cards. I I'm going to ask that you'll pull out your checkbook. Uh, ask, you'll go to wherever your secret compartment of money is. Uh, ask that you'll go do that. Amen. Uh, open up that second zipper of your purse. Amen. Amen. That, that 20 that's folded right behind your phone case. Go get that. Uh, but I, I want you to get a gift in your hand, in your possession. Uh, there are those of you who can go far and beyond. I dare not put a limit on your gifting on today. Uh, there's somebody in the room that can write a seed of 100. Others can write a seed of 300. Somebody else, 500. Uh, there are nine people that can write a check for 1,000. Amen. I want to encourage you uh, to be able to do that. Our ushers are moving amongst you in the event that you are in need of an envelope. You didn't know there was going to be a second offering today. Uh, please take full advantage of our electronic platforms, whether that's Givelify, whether that's Cash App, uh, text to give, ask that you will be able to give uh, in any way that you possibly can. Uh, but I want to do it with deliberate intention. I want to be able to do it with deliberate uh, intention as we move to do that. Uh, I, I want us to be able at bare minimal uh, to collect 10,000. I want us to be able to collect 10,000 in this service. Elder Waddell, you all help me uh, so that we don't confuse what's with what. Thank you so very much. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, ushers, would you help me? Uh, in this regard, those of you who will help us with our global outreach initiative, I uh, ask that you would sow that seed. The altar is open for you to do it, or our ushers are moving amongst you. Uh, but ask that you would do so uh, as gingerly, as quickly, as expressly as you possibly can. God loves what kind of giver? What kind of giver? Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. I'm glad to give. Hallelujah. Because if I were in need, I'd want somebody to give for me. Amen. Come on. Every person is sowing. Every person is giving. Bless you. Good to see you. Hey, sir. Bless you. Amen. You are strength like no other. Come on. Reach it. Reach it to me. You are my strength. You are my strength. Hey, strength like. Yeah. 
while gig we're giving, would you give rapt attention to our morning announcements? Media ministry, help us with our morning announcements. You still give? You still have your shoes on, you bring them. And now, New Birth, it's time for our video announcements. Today, today is the day we launch our Back to School Shoe Drive. That's right, we're collecting new shoes for boys and girls. Our goal is 2,000 pairs of shoes. Please bring donations to the altar. The shoes will be distributed Saturday, August 3rd during our Back to School Outreach. And check this out, the challenge is on. Android versus iPhone users. Let's see who can donate the most shoes and bring home the title. If the shoes are not in a box, please tie the laces together. Shoes can also be purchased online at MyRegistry.com. Simply type in New Birth. And for your convenience, Nagas Footwear will be on site selling shoes after worship service. We will have our global outreach day Sunday, July 7th, immediately after worship service. We will prepare and pack 53 thousand meals for missions in Kenya and we'll need all hands on deck. Please register to volunteer online at newbirth.org. We will also wear new birth t-shirts on that day and looking for the most creative shirt. The only stipulation is your shirt must be purchased from the Call to Conquer bookstore. Everything is now on demand. Nobody even goes to the movies anymore. You can pick what you want to watch and when you want to see it. Amazingly, that technology is coming to ministry. I need you to stand on alert because you're about to get a notification only if you have downloaded the New Birth app. I'm opening up the floodgates of heaven. I want to know what you want to hear. There's a survey about the Sundays in July. What do you want to hear your pastor preach about this month? It's my new series called Back by Popular Demand. You speak it, God will cover it, and I'll declare it. We will enter into a month of sabbatical for our group therapy for the month of July. We'll resume our regular schedule Tuesday, August 13th. During this time, please do some self-care and spend time with your family. This sabbatical does not affect our Sunday worship schedule. We want you to visit our Call to Conquer bookstore for two new exciting series, Understanding the Holy Spirit by Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. I'm saying when the Holy Ghost works in your life stuff that other folk don't understand only the Holy Spirit can intervene and say I can still use you in spite of your brokenness and Global Impact Crusade featuring Bishop John Francis from London anytime fear comes in that's not from God that's from the devil you were never designed to walk in fear. You were designed to walk in faith. Also in the Call to Conquer bookstore, you'll find July's book of the month, Stuck by Sir Anneli Rufus. It's available right now, so make sure you pick up a copy today. And New Birth, here's a special treat. We want you to join us for Worship Sunday, July 14th at 9.30 a.m. And there's a special treat in store for you. Sometimes I gotta cry a little bit loud. Renowned recording artist, Anthony Hamilton. He'll be performing live and signing his new book. So make sure to get here early to get a seat. And that's all I have for you this time, New Birth. Look at your name telling me you got to love New Birth. Now, how many of y'all got crazy faith? How many of you believe whatever you ask for, he'll do it? How many of you believe God will exceed your expectation? Now, if y'all don't shout over this, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I'm telling you, if y'all don't shout over this, I'm moving to Canada. I told y'all I needed $20,000 by next week to feed Kenya, right? Our goal today was just to raise $10,000. I need y'all to go crazy. Somebody just bought me $10,000. Come on. Hey. Give somebody a high five. Tell them God cares. Thank you. All right. 
Be seated. Be seated. I'm going to say something, and I only want 100 people to go nuts. How many of y'all crazy enough to believe this week somebody going to give you $10,000? Y'all didn't say nothing. Be seated, I gotta ask you something. Be seated. Be seated, I gotta ask you something. I gotta ask you something. How would you act if I told you in the month of July, 10,000 of your bills getting cut off? Come on. I I gotta ask you something. How would you act if I told you that your children and grandchildren are gonna get $10,000 worth of scholarships? I can't hear nobody. It's gonna be big. Y'all believe that? How many of y'all are ready for it? Look at your neighbor, tell him it's gonna be. It's gonna be your next blessing. Here it is. It's gonna be. Be seated, let's try it again. It's gonna be Be seated, come on, we gotta get out of here. It's gonna be something to the people who are online real quick listen we you want to donate shoes we are now at myregistry.com myregistry.com put in new birth and they will ship the shoes for you directly to our church somebody give God a hand clap of praise those of you who have already bought shoes our virtual family our online worshipers uh, you can go to our website newbirth.org and we have already pre-printed your shipping label. All you got to do is print it uh, illegally for free at work tomorrow. Just print it tomorrow. <laughs> they done took enough from you. You're giving it back to the church. <laughs> Download it. The shipping label, you can send it uh, to our church. Now, a uh, reminder, there is no Bible study in July. No Bible study in July. I said, Joe, please go our Call to Conquer bookstore. We're all in new birth t-shirts next Sunday. You don't have a new birth t-shirt. Don't worry about it. Just come anyway. Do not use that as an excuse not to come. We need you to register and volunteer. Uh, if we get more people to volunteer for us to prepare these 50,000 meals, we'll be able to do it in no time flat. Uh, but if, if it ain't that many of us, uh, we, it's going to be a slumber party. Amen. So, so, so we need you, please, bring your lazy children. Bring all of them. Amen. We, we got to give them a, a work ethic and sweat equity. 
Amen. Disconnect that video game and bring them to church uh, on next Sunday so that they can be instilled with a global mindset. Uh, Nagash, which is a minority-owned footwear company, uh, they have a pop-up shop today. Uh, we don't want you to spend all your money with Nike and New Box and uh, New Balance and Vans, uh, but support some of our minority-owned businesses. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise for them. I uh, ask that you'll please do that. Now, we can right go unless somebody else want to bring me 10,000. I'll, I'll stay right here. <laughs> I'll stay right here. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. Thank you. Hallelujah. As we leave this place, but never from God's presence. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. Repeat after me. Walk with God. And he'll walk with me. Talk with God. You know, talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Build for God, and he'll build for me. Love God, because he first loved me. Would you lift that hand as high as you see yourself going? I'm telling you, 10,000 going to come to you quick. Your bills are going to be paid off fast. I hope you'll shout, our church is going to be debt free before you know it. As that you'll fill out your covenant pledge commitment cards, our ushers are at every door. You cannot escape. They are at every door waiting to receive your pledge. Now when he who's absolutely able to do anything but fail, may God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said amen. Don't forget to get your t-shirts and your tennis shoes. Just for me. Just for me. And it's gonna be. 